It's the end of the world as we know it. Judgment Day. The day the human race was nearly destroyed by the weapons they built to protect themselves. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies where the world ends. Wouldn't you know, rising toxicity levels have made life unsustainable on Earth. For this list, we're taking a look at movies where the world is either on the brink or in the midst of destruction. And by the end of the film, life on Earth as we know it must come to an end. Yeah, All right, stay with me. I know how this sounds. Movies that exist in a post-apocalyptic world like The Road or Mad Max Fury Road were not considered, as that's a list for another day. It is by my hand you will rise from the ashes of this world! And because we'll be discussing plot details of these films, a spoiler alert is in order. This is ridiculous. Number 10, Interstellar. Nelson's torching his whole crop. Light? They're saying it's the last harvest for okra. Ever. The Earth in this Christopher Nolan sci-fi epic is no longer a lush planet where flora is plentiful. Food growth has become nearly impossible, and the future of humanity is in jeopardy. The last people to starve will be the first to suffocate. Primarily following the crew aboard a spaceship as they desperately search for a new inhabitable planet, the shadow of death looms large over every scene. But there's a distinct feeling of hope that permeates the story. Do not go gentle to that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. A visual masterpiece that keeps you guessing as to its next move and hits you at an instinctual level. Interstellar is a worthy addition as humankind is forced off its home permanently. There's some things that aren't meant to be known. Number nine, seeking a friend for the end of the world. Once again, if you are just tuning in, the CSA space shuttle deliverance has been destroyed. The final mission to save mankind has failed. The 70 mile wide asteroid known commonly as Matilda is set to collide with Earth in exactly three weeks time. If a mission failed to stop an asteroid from impacting Earth and the end of the world were upon us, we could do a lot worse than Kira Knightley or Steve Carell by our side. But instead, I am on the scenic route to the guillotine with you and you. After humanity finds out they have three weeks left to live, Carell's Dodge and Knightley's Penny befriend each other and try to make each other's final weeks happier. In Dodge's case, by finding the one that got away. Well, they all got away, but she was the first, yeah. And in Penny's case, by returning to her family in England. If you drive me to where I need to go, I can get you to your family. They find that they are the missing ingredients in each other's lives. Sure, their story may have a grim ending, but at least these two didn't go out alone. What do we do now? I just want to lie here with you. Number eight, Miracle Mile. I mean, for me to find a girl my age who actually knows who Dickie Wells and Vernon Brown were, there has to be a cosmic plan of some sort. Just when a man finds the woman of his dreams, a phone rings and he finds out that nuclear war is imminent. We're talking real imminent. But it's for real, Dad. There's no drill. We shoot our wad in 50 minutes. At times, Harry's uncertain that the end is, in fact, near, and that the information he received was accurate, becoming increasingly worried that he alone sparked the panic gripping L.A. What is the truth, Harry? Where did you hear we'd started a war? Those people at the helicopter said Landa told them, and you told Landa? Oh God, what am I doing? Even so, Harry tries to find a way to escape his impending doom, and finds himself going to great lengths to do so. We wouldn't be surprised if you've never heard of this cult film, but by maintaining the feel of an 80s comedy while tackling a horrific situation, Miracle Mile stands out as exceptional. Look at that baby go! It's going all the way to Tia f***ing Wana. Number seven these final hours. As I speak to you right now, it's making its way towards our fair nation. When a meteor strikes the opposite side of the world, sparking a global firestorm, Australian James leaves his lover to travel across a city where anarchy rules in an attempt to reunite a girl with her family and to join his girlfriend to enjoy the party to end all parties. Where have you been? I've been going crazy out of my mind. An Australian film that's largely unknown in some parts of the world, These Final Hours deserves a great deal more acclaim and notice. 
you ever think you might end up in hell instead of heaven? That'd be awful. With characters that are far from innocent and a goal that seems fruitless, the performances, story, and situation have you rooting for them despite the odds. I love you so much. I'm sorry. I'm here. Number six, The Day After. Undoubtedly one of the better television films ever made, and still the highest rated, The Day After is a product of its time. Will the Russians advance straight for the Rhine and defy NATO's declared policy of defense by all means, including the use of tactical nuclear weapons? Taking place during the Cold War and showing a worst-case scenario outcome of nuclear war, it's an uncompromising film that juxtaposes life before, during, and after the destruction wrought by such a conflict. Either we fired first and they're going to try to hit what's left, or they fired first and we just got our missiles out of the ground in time. We're introduced to a world we know well, and a wholly unfamiliar one at the same time. One where failing to find food and shelter means your very survival. That's it. No more. What do you mean, no more? Ending with a single stark voice calling over the radio in vain, the day after feels entirely possible. Hello? Is anybody there? Anybody at all? Number five, this is the end. Back the streets, back, all right. When a group of self-obsessed hedonistic celebrities gathers for a housewarming party on the same night as the apocalypse, the results are absolutely hilarious. It's not bullshit. You wanna know something else, Jay? If this is the end of the world and all the good people died, what you're saying is Seth, me, Jonah, Craig, and Danny are a bunch of assholes. I'm straight up lovable, son. Featuring a who's who of this generation's comedic actors, as well as a few other random cameos. Oh! That's not cool. Don't touch that's my phone. Michael, that's not cool, man. Perhaps the most impressive part is not the comedy that ensues, but the fact that the filmmakers didn't use the impressive cast as an excuse to cut corners on the effects. Whether it was the standout appearance by the intentionally obnoxious Michael Sarah or the performances of the six leads, this is a film unlike any other on this list. Number four, On the Beach. We're all doomed, you know. The whole silly, drunken, pathetic lot of us. Doomed by the air we're about to breathe. The battle is not over even after the world has been decimated by World War III, for the nuclear fallout is on its way. The war started when people accepted the idiotic principle that peace could be maintained by arranging to defend themselves with weapons they couldn't possibly use without committing suicide. On the Beach follows humanity as it anticipates ultimate destruction due to the impending radiation sickness that is moving south to Australia. We're left with a world in which people are deciding either to succumb to the sickness or to end their lives themselves. God. God forgive us. A grisly window into the despair of near certain doom. This film is a harrowing look at the outcome of nuclear war the shadow of which loomed large when the film was released in 1959 and remains relevant today. There isn't time. No time to love. Nothing to remember. Nothing worth remembering. Number three, Last Night. A tiny Canadian film made on a relatively low budget Last Night revolves around a society that knows their world will end at midnight and packs in plenty of style and substance. All of this great stuff. It details how an assortment of folks spend their last night on Earth, with one duo of strangers agreeing to take each other's lives. At 12 o'clock, I'm asking you to shoot me. One family feigning a Christmas party. My, uh, my mother, she just threw this big Christmas dinner. She wanted us to relive our happiest moments as a family. And one man trying to experience as many new types of sex as possible before the end. I just don't want to risk having bad sex today. Just don't want that to be the last thing on my mind. It may never be made evident what deadly force will take them, but what is clear is that the film's strong direction, script, and cast make it a must-see for film buffs. <laughs> Thank you.
Number two, melancholia. The earth is evil. We don't need to grieve for it. Arguably the artsiest film about the end of the world. This visceral Lars von Trier joint is populated with character archetypes and metaphors too numerous to count. But the general theme involves the peace with which depressed people can face calamitous events. Listen to me. We agreed that you weren't going to make any scenes tonight. A newfound planet is set to collide with Earth, a somewhat obvious metaphor for the inevitability of depression. This unflinching portrayal of Doomsday is a majestic vision, told through the eyes of various different types of characters, all of which are relatable. I'm scared. We all are, sweetie. Just forget it. And while that may sound depressing in itself, and it does hit you at a guttural level, Melancholia ends on an oddly hopeful note. Oh, man. Close your eyes. Before we reveal our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. I've matched these numbers to the dates of every major global disaster for the last 50 years in perfect sequence, except for three. And these events haven't occurred yet, starting with this one. in eight minutes. If you live to see it, the world will end. Maybe that's the way it should be. If you gotta kill all my friends to survive, maybe it's time for a change. Number one, Dr. Strangelove. Group captain, I'm afraid this is not an exercise. Not an exercise, huh? In fairness to the other films considered for this list, it's pretty difficult to beat Stanley Kubrick. The whole point of the Doomsday Machine is lost. If you keep it a secret, why didn't you tell the world, eh? When an Air Force general orders a nuclear attack on the Soviet Union, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, an Air Force officer, and the President come together to attempt to prevent an apocalypse. General Turgidson, I find this very difficult to understand. I was under the impression that I was the only one in authority to order the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, that's right, sir. You are the only person authorized to do so. Unfortunately for humanity's sake, the war room proves to be full of fools, as these men are not exactly cool-headed in the face of such impending doom. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, this is the war room! In the end, based on the theme of this list, you can imagine what goes down. Cold War fears and detonating nukes have never been so hilarious. Hey, what about Major Kong? <laughs> Do you agree with our list? I thought I could, but I can't. What's your favorite movie where the world ends? For more catastrophic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> That's why you